A pleasant day to each and everyone. I am Mariluji Obena and today I am going to discuss about the ARCS model of motivation by John Keeter. So first, let's define what is ARCS model. The ARCS model by John Keeter is a motivational design process that includes a synthesis of motivational concepts and theories. So, ERCS model of a motivational learning is a method for improving the motivational appeal of instructional materials. The model suggests that learning occurs most effectively when learners are engaged throughout the entire learning process, and that strategies can be put in place to ensure that this engagement carries forward through the completion. So, the ERCS model was designed as a global learning model to be effective both in the classroom and in professional learning environments, such as corporate training and professional development. The concept is fluid enough that it can be adapted to the level of the learners in the group and has enough flexibility to be relevant even as the type of learner and the world's learning environment has evolved and changed. Now, let me introduce to you the author of ARCS model, John Keeler. So, John Keeler is an American educational psychologist. He is best known for his work on motivation in educational settings and in particular, the ARCS model of instructional design. John Keeler introduced the ARCS motivational model of instructional design in 1979. In his model, there are four components and stands for attention, relevance, confidence, and satisfaction. So first, we have attention. It is the materials must grab the learner's attention. Second is relevance. It is the material must matter to the students. And the third is confidence. The learners must believe that they can succeed. And the fourth is satisfaction, uh, which is the learners must receive some sort of reward or reinforcement at the end of the learning experience. So now let's go deeper of this four component. First, we have attention. So Killer suggested that attention could be obtained either by perceptual arousal or by inquiry arousal. So in the case of a, a perceptual arousal, the learner's attention would be gained by surprise, doubt, or disbeliefs. And for inquiry arousal, the learner's curiosity would be stimulated by challenging problems that needed to be solved. So in order to grab and hold learner's attention, a variety of methods could be employed, including first, active participation through games, role plays, or other types of hands-on practice. Learners are encouraged to become active participants in the learning process. As they get more engaged in the learning process, it is more likely to be interested in the e-learning content, and there are higher chances of completing the e-learning course. Second is use of humor. Although humor should be used with caution by including short humorous stories or lighthearted humor in the e-learning course, instructional designers can grab the attention of the audience. So, the third is conflict. Another technique to grab learners' attention is to present statements or facts that may be contrary to what the learner knows or believes to be true. So, this will grab their attention as they'll want to learn more about the topic under discussion. The fourth is variety. Instructional designers can also grab learners' attention by employing a variety of different media. Presenting all the information in the same way is boring, so offering alternative presentation forms is a strategy that can definitely make the e-learning course more interesting. So nowadays, the extended use of multimedia in the e-learning design is offering many possibilities toward this direction. 
And the fifth one is a real world examples. It is generally accepted that learners get more motivated if they believe that what they learn has a practical application in real life. Informing learners of the practical use of the e-learning material in their daily lives, either personal or professional, by employing real life stories or examples will grab their attention and will make them want to know more. And the second component of ARC's model is the relevance. A successful e-learning course design must establish relevance in order to motivate learners. To accomplish this, e-learning professionals are encouraged to use language analogies or stories to which the learner can relate. The following relevant strategies were suggested by the killer in the ERCS motivational model. So first, we have link of previous experience. So allowing learners to establish connections of the new information presented and they and what they already know from previous experience is a very successful motivational strategy because it gives learners the sense of continuity that keeps them motivated as it makes them realize that they are really expanding their knowledge base so the fact that they believe that learning is successful and not a waste of time so keeps them engaged in the e-learning course and it is uh, considered to be one of the top motivational factors second is perceived present worth so adult learners usually attend a e-learning course when they actually need it that is when new knowledge and skills are required in order for them to be able to deal with a particular situation or problem they face in real life so they get more motivated if they see a direct connection of how the e-learning course they attend will equip them with new skills that will help them to resolve their current issues the third is perceived future usefulness so the degree to which learners believe in how the e-learning course will help them later in their real lives is an important determinant of how much motivated will be a, to attend the e-learning course. So the instructional designers should communicate this message from the very beginning. So the fourth is modeling. Set an example and offers a presentation by those who may present them with a model of success, knowing that other people have successfully applied the particular piece of knowledge or skills presented. Motivates learners to perceive the e-learning course as useful as and the first steps towards their personal success. And the fifth one is choice. So giving learners choice upon their own instructional strategy is another factor that increases motivation. So this occurs because of the fact that adult learners know exactly what they want to learn and how. So they have preferences on specific learning methods or media that they may find more effective for them compared to others. So the third component of ERC is model is confidence so instructional designers should instill a sense of confidence in learnings by helping them to believe that they can succeed if learners feel as though they won't be able to accomplish their goals then this will reduce their motivation so here are some ways in which instructional designers can plan for e-learning activities that raise learners degree of confidence first Facilitate self-growth. Encourage learners to take small steps and immediately show them their progress in the e-learning course. This will motivate them by helping them believe in themselves. Fact that results in self-growth. Second is communicate objectives and prerequisites. So it is very important for learners to know in advance what exactly they have to achieve realizing that, that they can achieve the goals and objectives of the e-learning course in another motivating factor for them so it is also very important to know that what is expected of them and throughout the e-learning course and how exactly they are going to be evaluated at the end so the third is provide feedback feedback is another important determinant of learners motivation 
knowing that they are a stance in a crucial in uh, order for the learners to continue with the e-learning course. If no feedback is provided, learners feel confused as they cannot be sure about their progress in the e-learning course. So, feedback, specifically constructive one, is essential in order to encourage learners to proceed with confidence to the next e-learning activity or to re review a previous one, making the e-learning experience even more effective. Constructive feedback may be reinforced positive behaviors and skills. So, and the fourth one is give learners control. By providing learners with some degree of control over the learning process gives them a sense of independence and that they are control of their own success. In other words, it makes them believe that they are responsible for their own learning. So allowing learners to choose the learning method they find more suitable motivates them to commit to the e-learning course as it is a strategy that actively engage them in the learning process. And the fourth uh, component of ERCS model is satisfaction. So the last component of Keeler's ERCS motivational model is a satisfaction that the ERCS model presents a direct link between satisfaction and level of motivation either in stressing or extrinsic. Learners should be uh, proud and satisfied on what they have achieved throughout the e-learning course. Here are some strategies of how the instructional design can be adapted toward this direction. First, we have praise or rewards. So, the learning process must present learners with some kind of reward, whether this may be a sense of accomplishment or praise from the trainer or, ad or online facilitator. Uh, they can both uh, increase learners' levels of satisfaction from the e-learning course as they will leave them with a sense of achievement and recognition of their efforts throughout the learning process. Second is immediate application. Learners should feel as though the skills or materials that they are mastering will be useful in the future. This can be achieved by encouraging learners to apply their newly acquired knowledge and skills in a real-world settings or by engaging them in a real problem-solving activities. This will give learners inner satisfaction as they will find worthwhile the time, money, and effort they put in e-learning course. So, Killer's ERCS model of motivation has been successfully applied to all types of learning settings, both academic and corporate and learners of all age groups. So, this ERCS model also have strength and weakness. The strength is first, it keeps the learner engaged for the duration of the learning experience. Second is it is an active learning model that encourages learner participation. Third is it is a flexible and can be incorporated into a wide variety of learning experiences including training, professional development, and classroom regardless of whether the student is in a regular ed or a special ed or a higher ed. The fourth is um, it is continuous to be relevant over time and it's easy to apply. And the weakness of this ERCS model is may require the facilitator to completely rethink his or her approach to instruction and present difficulties if there are learners of uh, different levels of motivation in the group. So that would be all of my part. Thank you so much. Good day everyone. Let me have this time to talk about the elaboration theory by Ray Giluth. Ray Giluth elaboration theory. This theory is proposed by Charles M. Ray Giluth an American educational theorist, researcher, and a reformer. His research focuses on instructional design series and systematic transformation of educational systems to be learner-centered, personalized, competency-based, and largely project-based. The elaboration theory is the paradigm shift from teacher-centric instruction to learner-centered instruction and has caused New Needs for Ways to Sequence Instruction Reguluth of India, Charles Reguluth of Indiana University posited elaboration theory and instructional design model that aims to help select and sequence content in a way that will optimize attainment of learning goals. Proponents feel the use of motivators, 
analogies, summary, and synthesis that leads to effective learning. While the theory does not address primarily affective content, it is intended for medium to complex kinds of cognitive and psychomotor learning. According to Regeluth, elaboration theory has the following values. It values a sequence of instruction that is holistic as possible to foster meaning-making and motivation. His theory allows learners to make many scope and sequence decisions on their own during the learning process. It is an approach that facilitates rapid prototyping in the instructional development process. And it integrates viable approaches to school and sequence into a coherent design theory. And in his theory, there are three sequence or approaches. The first one is conceptual liberation sequence. This approach is used when there are many related concepts to be learned. The second one is the theoretical elaboration sequence and it is used when there are many related principles to be learned. And the last but not the least is simplifying condition sequence. This sequence is used when a task of at least moderate complexity is to be learned. This is Marjorie Palomar speaking. That would be all everyone. Thank you for watching the video. May you learn something from our report or our video report. May God bless us all and have a great day everyone. Thank you and goodbye.